Hey, what's up guys? I know it's been a while. It's been a uh, crazy season and I am way behind on videos. I have a list of videos here I have to put together, but uh, I wanted to do a part two to the Garmin Explorer with inReach. Uh, I did a open box review earlier uh, and just basically went over everything that came in the package and you know what I saw you know coming out of the box. Now that I had the opportunity to use it all season and field test it, I just wanted to go back over it, uh, give you some pros and cons of what I think and how it performed. But anyway, I'll kind of break it into two parts here. We'll start with the GPS part of it. Uh, the GPS is a very basic GPS. Nothing fancy. It's a smaller screen. It doesn't have, it's not color or anything like that. One of the downfalls right off the bat I noticed was I mentioned it in the first video is there is nowhere to put an SD card in it. So if you plan on using like Onyx Maps, a chip, uh, it will not work with this. But all in all, I used most of the functions, uh, uh, marked some points, uh, recorded some paths I took and stuff like that. And I had one incident where my path was not lined up with my waypoints. So I had, it was about a three and a half mile walk. I had the path marked and then I had a couple waypoints marked on the way. So what happened was I was following the path and I realized that I, it didn't look right. I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I was in some heavy, heavy timber. So there was a nice canopy above me. So it, it, I guess it just wasn't getting signal very well, but I, I've had this happen with other uh, GPS system. So I, I can't really say it's a negative. It might have just been where I was. But what happened was I ended up, I was about 10, 15 yards off the actual path. And then I realized once I got so far that the pathway was not lined up with the waypoints that I marked. I ended up finding the clearing, sat there for a second, all of a sudden everything lined back up and I was good to go. So it, it wasn't a huge deal, but if, uh, you know, you're, I guess if you're using it a lot, going way back in, uh, it could be an issue uh, if you don't have any uh, clear line of sight to the, you know the satellites or sky, you know. But once I got out of the canopy, uh, it was it was fine. And I the funny thing is is I walked that path multiple times and never had an issue with it. So the GPS on you know that for that part it works well. Now if you're a person that is going to use the GPS and all of its functions all the time, if you're constantly marking stuff and constantly using the GPS, this might not be the way to go. So if you're going to do three, four days, uh, you know, away from civilization and you plan on using this a lot, you have to remember this is also your emergency communication. So unless you're taking a, a portable charger with you, uh, that you know is going to keep this charged. If you keep using the GPS and the battery dies, you also lost your emergency, you know, your communication. So, if you're going to use it a lot, you might be better off getting a GPS system and then just getting a separate in-reach system or something similar to that. Me, I have been using my cell phone for probably most of the season. I use Onyx Maps a lot and then another uh, app for the GPS. So I am only really using this. I'll mark where I park, mark where camp is. Uh, I might, might mark a trail somewhere just so I make sure I come out the same way I go in, but I don't use it a ton. I, I it's basically for the, you know, communication part, but I use my phone for most of the GPS functions. And then, uh, if my phone dies, oh, well, my phone's dead. I still have GPS and emergency communication. Now for the communication side of it. So it's basically text messaging, works just like a phone. Uh, I had no issues with it, uh, really none at all. So I was able to communicate with my wife while I was in Northern Idaho and she was actually in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's all satellite. So sometimes I ended up, so long story here, I basically wanted to see how fast she was getting the messages. So I told her to, to, at first it was taking a little while before she responded. And I thought maybe this was just taking a while. And then I sent her a message saying, respond as soon as you get the message. And she did, and it was much quicker, uh, the response time. And I don't mean hours or anything. It was, you know, 15, 20 minute response time. 
but I did notice sometimes the messages would send out really fast and other times it might take five minutes or so before the message sent out. So that's just the text messaging part. So I didn't have to use the SOS part, thank God, but uh, the text, I'm assuming it's the same satellite you know, situation, but uh, for the most part, it worked. It did what I needed it to do. Uh, it, I would let her know when I got to where I was. Uh, I'd let her know midday. I'd send her one of the preset messages. So it doesn't. Those preset messages apparently don't use up your message, uh, however many messages you're paying for with the subscription. But I would send her, "Hey, I'm okay. Just checking in, whatnot." And then at the night time, I would, you know, send her a couple messages. "Hey, I'm okay. What's going on? All that good stuff." and had no issues with it. I did spend a couple nights inside my uh, trailer, if you didn't see the video, the portable hunting camp, uh, and it did not work inside the trailer, but I'd step outside and it worked just fine. So all in all, I'm happy with it. It works well for me. Uh, I take it everywhere with me pretty much, just because a, a lot of North Idaho, all of Idaho, all this area, I don't really know it. I'm still learning a lot of it, so I'm not super comfortable to you know to go back in anywhere without it, uh, unless I know I'm hunting you know a couple hundred yards from the road or something like that. But I still like to take it just to mark spots or mark what I see. But like I said, if you're going to use it for you know three, four, five nights in, and you're going to use it as your primary GPS and you're going to use all the functions and you're constantly going to mark water and if you see animals and waypoints and you know mark trails and uh, it it will drag the battery down. But if you're gonna go three, four nights in and you're just gonna use it for how I use it, just the, the basic functions, uh, communications, the battery will last just fine. I, I think I ran almost four days on it, using it, uh, messages, very little, but I was still using it. And I think I still had like 21% or something like that. So uh, yeah, if you're going to use it a lot, I recommend getting a GPS, and an in, in reach. That way you're not using the battery up on your emergency communications. If you're like me and use your phone a lot and you don't use the GPS that much, then this is awesome because you do have a backup GPS and you have emergency communications. You stick it in your pack, you know, mark some spots, whatever you have to do with it. Use your phone or even another GPS as the primary. Uh, I always take my phone just because of the camera function uh, you know, and the, sometimes I do have service up on top of a mountain so I can use it. And the Onyx maps, I use that a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. So all in all, it's a good purchase if you're considering it. Uh, I, I would assume Garmin's probably going to come out with something, a, a newer version here, maybe this year, uh, 2018. So I don't know that for a fact, but if you're looking into it and you're considering it, I think it is a good buy. Uh, if you're going to use it the way I was just describing. So all in all, I think it's well worth it. Thanks guys.